album in uh, seven years. It was called, or is it called, uh, Embrace. Uh, it was followed up to Refugees. And we're going to hear uh, Vicky Blight, the lovely Vicky Blight, having a chat to them. And uh, we're going to play a little bit of live music. So come with us as we walk down this corridor into the staff canteen to welcome Embrace. <laughs> big family uh, live session uh, held in our little staff canteen uh, that's taken from uh, the goodwill out from july of 1997 uh, vicky blight and then uh, caught up with them uh, probably around the uh, toilet area <laughs> here's vicky having a chat to embrace so we think back to the vibe of your debut back in 98 the goodwill out and uh, it was reflective it was emotive it was heart on sleeve kind of stuff and then we take the new album, the self-titled new album. How does it differ, and what about it has still got that core embraceness to it? I think it's um, more like us than we've ever been, really. It's sort of, we went back to all our early influences, like Echo and the Bunny Man and the Smiths and uh, Joy Division U2 and all that, all the influences that we had um, even before record. 
record companies were interested in us. And this album sort of feels more like us than we've ever been, which is one of the reasons why we decided uh, to call it Embrace. And in terms of the, the break, was it sort of seven, eight years? Yeah. Um, what were the reasons for it? You know, the rumours are you just got sick of playing. <laughs> well, we kind of come to sort of the end of um, the sort of part of the, you know, the music has kind of sort of started sounding like the same as we'd done before. We're kind of regurgitating a few ideas and, and we thought we'd just take a couple of months off. Um, and then that sort of turned into six months and then it's like, well, let's get back together in the new year. And then it was the summer and then it was the new year again. And it just seemed to go really quick. Um, but we were sort of busy doing other things. Um, then I kind of got to the stage where I felt like I had a load of ideas that I wanted to get out and I wanted Danny to hear them and see what he thought. Because it's kind of been my sounding board since, you know, and vice versa since, since we started. And I don't really know I've got a good idea until he says it's a good idea um, in some ways. Don't use that against me, by the way. He's <laughs> <laughs> not all this up. So, so I got, got like a load of demos together and played them to Danny, and he sort of seems generally, you know, en energised by hearing them. And yeah, he took it for had, it. Um, Refugees and a Thief on my island. He'd done demos of both of those, and they just they were amazing. And I thought, right, yeah, we need to make another album. And uh, I'd written, I'd written about fifty ideas by then, and I basically scrapped all of them because none of them were half as good as what Richard had brought. So it's like, right, OK, back to the drawing board. Um, Some of them were half as good. <laughs> about, yeah, about 50% as good. <laughs> this, is, this is on your scale, remember? Yeah, the rest yeah. of us would be mind blown. Yeah. Every day I take my time, I dip it in the water every day. 
so you took the break and uh, what what do you think the the most important thing that break gave you what what did it, it do gives for you? you clarity really like when when we uh finished eight years ago um when we took that break we were really successful commercially but um, we didn't feel like we were doing our best work artistically. Um, this new day did really well. It went to number one, and the uh, um, singles all did really well. You know, we almost had a number one single with Nature's Law, and um, we were doing arenas and all that sort of stuff. But it didn't feel like we were doing our best work. And um, when that happens, you get millions and millions of opinions. All these other people who make money from you whose livelihoods depend on you continuing, have an opinion about what they think your next single should be, about what you should be doing. And um, we just needed to get away from all that so we could hear what we thought again, you know, that little voice you have inside yourself that says when you're doing good stuff, when you're doing bad stuff. And that was really the initial reason for the break. And it just took a while before that little voice that you have inside yourself starts telling you that you're doing stuff that's good again, you know? I guess it's that, that self-belief and that self-confidence. Um, you're so used to listening to other people's voices that you kind of forget to listen to that inner one of yours. Yeah, they drowned yeah. you out a little bit. The background noise drowned you out a little bit. And you kind of get used to it as well. You kind of get used to having sort of like a group of people's opinion that sort of forms what you think and you'll ask, ask them and then if the ones that agree with you, you kind of go with. But um, I started doing like production and working with young bands and they've all got... The thing about being in a young band is you've got a really singular vision. That it might be small-minded in some ways, but it's, it's exactly what you want to do, and you won't do anything, you won't stray from the path, and I found that really sort of inspiring, and just the idea of making music to enjoy the process of making music and to enjoy what it is you do. Almost um, that naivety is the yeah. thing that kind of spurs you on yeah, to yeah, start I've with. I've reassessed what we've done you know, in the past, and there's a lot of things that, we, that I don't like about us, but there's a lot of things that I absolutely love about us, which is maybe underrepresented through the singles that we've released and things. We've got kind of a... A melancholy kind of it's like a happy sad sort of feel to our music
was when he hit in 2004. Ashes uh, recorded down in our uh, staff canteen. Uh, fully stocked with milk, semi-skimmed, uh, various mint teas, coffees. Uh, good selection of biscuits generally, custard creams, you know, or bourbons. We've got it all going here. Thank you to Vicky there, talking to uh, Danny and uh, Richard McNamara. See, Richard, I hope it is. I embarrassingly, when I was talking to him uh, about, uh, the, on the very same day, I couldn't remember the name of his brother, and I said, uh, and you are? <laughs> Richard, yes, you are, brothers. You are the McNamara brothers. But anyway, there we go. Uh, uh, a nice session from the band. This is uh, Sunday night.